All right, so we're going to find the length of a polar curve. As we see here, r equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. And it actually is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is use the formula that's highlighted in blue up there. And we just so in setting these up, we just have to be careful that we follow what's under the radical. So the length is equal to, and this curve is traced out from 0 to 2 pi. So that's going to be my limits of integration. And under the radical, we have the original function squared plus the derivative squared. Now, the derivative of 2 minus 2 cosine theta is 2 sine theta. And then we just go from here. So, multiplying out under the radical. Remember, we can't do anything until we have single terms under the radical. This looks like 4 minus 8 cosine theta plus 4 cosine squared theta. And there's a 4 sine squared theta. And we hopefully recognize by now, whenever we see a cosine squared and a sine squared together, we know that that's 1. So that means this is 4. And that means I have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 8 minus 8 cosine theta. Now, from here, I'm kind of at a loss, but we'll just keep going anyway. Notice that we can factor out an 8 under the radical. So we have that. So where to go from here? Well, there is an identity that we can use from the past. And it has to do, and you know, so look, looking for identities where we have 1 minus cosine theta under a radical. Turns out we have sine of theta over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine theta, all divided by 2. So, gee, that's a really nice idea there. So this means that the square root of 2 times the sine of theta over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine theta. Beautiful. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to break up this radical first. And I'm going to say that this is the square root of 8 outside. Integral from 0 to 2 pi. And square root of 1 minus cosine 2 theta is the square root of 2 times the sine of theta over 2. There we go. Okay. Now, bringing these two together, square root of 8 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 16. So that's 4. And taking the antiderivative of sine of theta over 2 is negative 2 cosine theta over 2, evaluated at pi and 0. So then we have negative 8, you know, bringing these two together. Cosine of pi over 2 minus cosine of... I'm sorry, that's 2 pi. So that's cosine of pi, whoopsie, cosine of pi minus cosine of 0. And this is negative 8 times negative 1 minus 1, which turns into positive 16. And that is the length of our curve. Who'd have thought that that would come out to be such a nice number? Turns out cardioids like this, they do. Okay. And... There we have it. So come back next time and we'll have another video, different curve, different integration technique, just to kind of dust off the cobwebs there because we haven't integrated for a while. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.